Um, so the next video here, it's actually going to be one giant model that we're building, but I'll likely spread it across two or three videos uh, just to go through each component part. Um, we're doing it this way, you know, because uh, it's cool to see the kind of stuff you can actually build a model to do. And it also allows us to learn the uh, some of the last remaining skills I want to cover, um, such as uh, model only tools and uh, nesting models, which is where you put models within other models. Uh, we're ultimately going to be building uh, this. You know, it seems pretty simple. First model has some output values, and then you merge it. Uh, first model is actually uh, a bit more intricate. This is what we're going to be building. Uh, over the next few videos right here. As I said, it involves a number of different tools. But effectively what it's going to do is, you know, I envisioned uh, that you have a request from somebody who maybe wants you to stabilize five vacant lots. And the criteria they've given you is uh, that the they want it to be, um, you know, this is a, a new building that they've just built right here. So they want the first one to be the closest possible uh, lot to this that is um, at least a thousand or sorry at least a hundred feet away from that and then proceed successively in that fashion that each successive lot needs to be the closest possible it can be to the school while also still being a thousand feet away from anything that was previously stabilized right so it's an idea that like get as close as you can but then nothing else within a hundred feet get as close as you can but then nothing else within a hundred feet um, you know, I'm using it for a silly, weird application here that you probably never would, but it's the same kind of tools you could use for citing anything or doing anything iteratively, um, you know, in which essentially like the uh, results of one repetition need to influence uh, the rest. So I come up here and I would run the model and, you know, it's not going to look like much is happening, but really like a lot is being run through. Run through the original model again and again and again and again, then eventually it's going to kick out of the original and get into the new model. And it's going to spit out, you know, exactly what I requested. And I can, <clears throat> you know, make them maybe like a nice blood red so I can see. And there they are, right? Each of the five chosen following my model, you know, with a rule being that they have to be as close as they can possibly be to this, the closest of their iteration, but still retain a distance of about a thousand feet, or sorry, a hundred feet from each other. So let's actually go through and see how those six seemingly random ones um, you know, were eventually uh, uh, picked out. And uh, it started, like with any model, of course, by coming into your, uh, your wherever you're making your models for today. And again, you only need vacant parcels, uh, new parcel, and um, schools, or my school today. I just had kind of some other data that was laying around, but those are the only three you need. So let's do um, a new model, and we're going to call it our, our uh, you know, sub-model. And interestingly enough, this is going to be the biggest model, right? This is the, the kind of large one I showed you in the beginning. But I'm calling it uh, my sub-model because uh, it's going to be eventually nested within that, that last one that you just saw me run, which is more like a merge to bring the final product to you. So really the what this model here we're going to build, the one I'm calling sub, but again is going to be much bigger. This is where all that behind the scenes work went each time with distances being measured right to ensure you're not a thousand feet away. Then measuring everybody who remains distance to this point. Sorting all of them to see who's the closest. Picking the one that happens to be the closest. Citing it and then starting the whole process over again while also concurrently making sure that every time a new lot is created, it gets merged into a macro file that we can give out in the end. Right? So there's going to be a lot of skills uh, that we're interactively learning here together. So first thing, though, we know there's going to be one of these iterators. right? This went through five times because it picked five lots. So we're going to want to do uh, a similar thing. We're going to want to take um, uh, values from, from one to five. And we right click and go to uh, iterator, iterate four. And I can kind of keep it up here, and eventually this is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Our model as time goes on, you know, and, and we'll zoom out as needed. But I can kind of nest it up here where I'm going to start 
and I want to go between 1 and 5 by iterations of 1. Recall from the uh, last video and last week that what will be stored in value is uh, the number of iteration sequence that we're on. And so we can use that uh, ultimately to, um, um, you know, kind of help us uh, save things so that they don't overwrite each other. So I'm going to drag in uh, vacant parcels and new parcel because that's essentially what I'm going to use, like the data as the starting point here. Um, right, that's the new parcel that they built, and we're going to use that to sort of catalyze the process and, and, and pick the, uh, the most appropriate uh, lot to be able to build upon. So first thing that we're going to want to do, right, is uh, since they just built on this lot, right, they just stabilized it, we, we don't want it to be this lot. So we almost need to create like an initial selection so that we can't be uh, anything more than 1,000 feet from, from this lot. Right, that's kind of the, the, the primary first step is, you know, or sorry, not a thousand. I keep confusing the, uh, the old one. We want to be 200 feet, right? So we need to find out a way to say that, like, look, any of these parcels are eligible. They just can't be 200 feet from the, um, from the new parcel. And we would do that like uh, we kind of introduced last week. If you go into data management, every tool that we have learned this semester through right clicks or through other desktop shortcuts, right? Selection, select by location, select by attribute. It's here. You just kind of have to know where to find it in the management tool. And this one in particular is down here where it says layers and table views. And you can see it all the way at the bottom, select layer by attribute, select layer by location. Uh, so we go through this. You will maybe try to use this on your own once or twice and see that it won't connect. And sometimes it won't connect to something if there's no layer of it. And so that's one of kind of the techniques we're going to mess with on this model, too, is what that means to create a layer in Model Builder. Um, but don't want to get too far ahead of myself uh, just yet. Okay, so drag in, select layer by location. And, you know, we can say, hey, I want to select from the parcels. So that's what I'm going to be selecting from. And, you know, new parcel is going to be that feature that gives me some kind of relationship. A selecting feature. All right, so I'm selecting from vacant parcels, and I say are within a distance of 200 feet. Interesting. So I was just reading something. I may have found a way to make the model one step easier, but I don't want the video to mess up just in case. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, I've selected. You know, you can envision, and, and we'll, we'll sort of interactively see kind of how this 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 works right here. Um, that we're just sort of selecting parcels, and, and I could literally like run it here. You know, maybe I'll I'll make you, um, you know, one to one to start, just so we're only running once. But I could say model run and it would run and it wouldn't look like anything's happening but if I turn vacant parcels on and off there it is right it's selected any that are within a thousand feet nice and easy that's the way that we've begun so turn that selection off um, now the next thing we need to do right if that had happened I'll just run it again uh, to show you kind of what I want to do but that gets us the first part which is essentially selecting any that are within a thousand feet. But really what we want to do, right, is we don't want those. We want those to be ineligible. It's almost like we want everything else selected. And you would normally do that um, in vacant parcels by coming up and saying uh, switch selection. And, right, it would switch like that. Um, you can actually do that in Model Builder too. Now there's a... a interesting little thing here I found under the selection type that says switch selection. I'm going to try that. If that actually works right from here, I was going to bring select by attribute in, which I know you can do this from. But if it works here, it's much easier. All right. Ooh, there. Maybe it's this one. There it is. That's the one I wanted. Perfect. So that's lovely. Okay, so it's hiding right here where it says invert spatial relationship. Essentially, that means, right, if I said select any that are within 200 feet, 
it'll automatically, hopefully, theoretically do a subset selection. So it'll select those that are outside. And so that way I can say, save, model, run, do its thing. And theoretically, if I did this properly, exactly right, right? It's inverted it, so it's only those that are outside of the area. And that's going to be my eligible parcels, right? That's essentially where I'm going to be looking for whichever one of these, because it's more than 200 feet from this, is closest to the school. So to remind myself from screwing up here, I'm going to right click, go to labels, create label. First label I'm going to create right here is going to say, reminder, you only have one iteration so that I fix it before the end. But I also like to use these sometimes because they're helpful in reminding you what different parts of the tool do, right? So I can come here and I can say meant to select only parcels um, greater than 200 feet from existing lots. That's really the purpose of, of kind of what this is and, and why this thing is, is doing what it wants. Oh, ArcGIS, why can't you? Be better with how we format our paragraphs. All right, so essentially I've done that. I've made a selection here. And what I'm going to do, um, essentially for the for like future purposes, is I've created a selected layer here. And now what I want to do is I want to take this selected layer and I want to export it, right? I want to copy it in the same way you would um, like, uh, like right-click and do an export. And you do that with copy features, right? So I would come in here and I would go to uh, features and do copy features. And normally I would just save this in memory because I don't actually need this. Um, but I, I'm going to uh, keep it for, for this step uh, just so that we can kind of show the results of what we've done. Sort of like how I, I kept the Swiss cheese last time. Copy features, again, it's literally an export. That's why I'm teaching it to you. Come in here, connect. That's my feature. And what I'm going to do is I, I know that I only have one iterator set up now, um, you know, just to try to make this process a little bit easier. But I will save it in such a way. Let me find my outputs folder. I'll save it in such a way, um, call it available lots, and I'm going to use the percent value percent, right? This is going to make sense eventually, my inline variable substitution. Again, if you missed that, sorry gang, I found a place to save and I called it eligible or usable lots. Well, I think I typed eligible at first, so let's keep consistent. Eligible lots underscore percent value percent. Again, the purpose of this is I'm creating a copy that could live in memory. The only reason it's not living in memory right now is because I want to be able to show you the result of it. But I'm essentially creating a copy which is just like exporting the selection. And I'm saying take on value so that when I do this five times, I'll create a different one of these every single time um, is kind of the main reason that I am doing this. So let's run it, you know, and I'll, I'll add this to the display just for the moment so that we can see it, um, right? We only have one iterator, so it should only create one. And hit save, model, run it. You know, it'll do its thing, it'll run. And you can see something called eligible lots came and Right, if I turn off the vacant parcels, there they are, right? Eligible lots in green. And you can see they kind of mimicked the selection. So really, there I did. I just selected something, and then I added uh, and exported it and gave it the name eligible lots and said take on what was under value. So last step for this video, uh, we're going to kind of complete the first part here. Is um, This is one of the, the first times where this is actually going to branch off into two different directions. It's going to go here because it's going to keep, um, you know, it's going to continue to do what we need it to so that we can use it to, like, select out the best land. 
But effectively what I've done here is I need to use what I've just created, right? That area where I've buffered within a thousand feet of the parcels. And um, I need to reuse that later on because the next time I run this, I want to make sure since we know that these parcels are those that are greater than a, a hundred or 200 feet from vacant land, which is one of our criteria, I'm going to need to reload those like we did for the last one so that my script keeps growing and it remembers like, oh yeah, I, I, first time I ran through, I measured 200 feet from new parcel. Let me remember that so the second time when I'm finding my second or third lot, I'm not looking again at all those lots that are right near new parcel. I'm not forgetting about it. I'm realizing that like, yeah, okay, we did um, try to do a select by location so that we would only be looking at those parcels that are greater than 200 feet. And by doing that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to essentially make a, uh, uh, um, a feature layer that I'm going to use at some point later in the model. And you find that under, um, layers and table views, make feature layer. And I'm going to grab it, bring it here just so I can use it as needed. You're going to be my feature layer. And I'm going to give you a rename. I'm going to right click you and call you um, new all, or rather new vacant land. And you literally just sit here, right? This thing will just sit right here until I am ready to use it later on. We're just sort of kind of doing something because we know that we essentially need to. Um, but later on, it'll become clear why we did that. So I'm going to end this video right here. Uh, you know, we're not iterating yet. We just had one iteration so we can show some stuff. But we took a new parcel and vacant parcels. We selected those parcels that were within a thousand feet. Um, and we essentially copied those into their own uh, layer. And then we used that right here to uh, save itself as a, a feature layer, which is going to become a little clearer why we did that in just a moment. So with that, I'm going to save and uh, end this one, and I'll see you at the next video.